Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastor prepared a message, and we're starting out on a journey. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, and that makes it the first Sunday in a brand new church here. And as, and as the start of a new church here, that means it's also the first Sunday for our main gospel writer for the year, which this year is St. Luke. Now on this day, the first Sunday in Advent, the first Sunday in the church year, the first Sunday in the year of St. Luke, our gospel reading is the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And you might ask, what is that? I thought this was Advent, a time when we're getting ready for Christmas. A Palm Sunday reading? What's up with that? Well, allow me to explain. And to do that, we'll look at this reading from three angles. How it fits from the start of Advent, the start of the church year, and the start of a year in the Gospel of Luke. But from all these angles, we'll see how this, this text fits for you. For today, you and I are starting on a journey to Jerusalem, and Jesus is leading the way. First, how does this reading fit for the first Sunday in Advent? What's the connection between this Palm Sunday account and the season of Advent? Well, the connection is in the theme of our Lord's coming. That's what the word Advent means, coming. Advent is the season of preparation in which we look forward to Christ's coming, his coming at Christmas, to be sure, but also his coming again on the last day and his coming to us now in word and sacrament. And so our gospel reading for today, as well as the other readings, all, all, all call us to get ready for the coming of our king. Behold, your king is coming, righteous and ha having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Old Testament reading prophesies the coming of Israel's Messiah. Behold, the days are coming, it says, and the epistle points us from there to the last day at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel then is the centerpiece that pulls all these events together. Christ coming into Jerusalem is the fulfillment of the Old Testament expectation and the basis for our New Testament hope for the future. Jesus comes as Israel's Messiah. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes establishing peace between God and man, opening up eternity for us and calling forth our praise. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Have you ever been on a journey? Journeys can be short, they can be long. Uh, I guess people can say, we all can say life is a journey. And even at the beginning of a journey, you have a goal and a purpose. Well, I have a journey that I took some 43 years ago. And uh, it was, I was on my ship. I had about two weeks left in the Navy. Um, April 14th, 1978, I was getting out of the Navy. Um, I wanted to come to Pittsburgh to get orders. And everybody, they did their best. They went out and to all kinds of messages. Um, and they said, no dice. But I was holding some orders for dear old Philadelphia. And I only had about, like I said, about 15 days. Well, on March 25th, which was um, a good Friday, I, I was standing duty. Saturday, I was coming home. And um, I had been giving orders out of the blue to come to Pittsburgh to work with the recruiter in Westview. And his name was Jim Eller for a week. And normally when you're getting out of the Navy, they don't give you these things. So it was, um, I had to pay for my trip, but I was driving up and Karen was there. But there were so many expectations during that time because do I get out of the Navy? Do I accept these orders? Uh, we had a baby on the way. And that journey for me, I did not have it all together, believe me. Uh, so it was, but, but 
to, to, to leave that ship on, on Saturday morning and get there on Easter Sunday. And uh, so I was to report at Westview Monday morning to, uh, to see Jim Eller, uh, Senior Chief Jim Eller. So I got in my car, it was pouring down rain. I'm in my Cracker Jacks, that's a Navy uniform. And I walk in, I said, Jim, I'm here to help you. Uh, my name is Petty Officer Booth. I just came from uh, South Carolina. And he looked at me, he said, well, guess what? We're off today. And I says, what? You're off, okay. He said, well, why don't you just go home and relax? But I got in my car and something said, and I, obviously we always give credit to the Lord, but something says no. My normal seat would have went home, let's go back to bed, I'll get back up Tuesday. But I, I decided, nope, I'm going down to, to Navy Recruiting District, Pittsburgh. So I checked in and there was a senior chief, William Green, there to meet. He says, um, I saw I'm Petty Officer Booth. I'm here to, to, for some recruiting support for uh, Westview, but I would love to have orders to this command, but they say there's, no, there's nobody, uh, there's no billets available at all for my rating at that time. Well, within, within fifth, um, he said to me, what? what? What are you doing here? He said, I just have a message in my hand that somebody was holding orders to Pittsburgh and they just canceled 15 minutes ago. And I said, what? I said, well, I, I said, well, I'm a yeoman. I, I, I have great evaluations. I'm holding orders to Philadelphia, but I haven't accepted them. Boy, would I love to come to Pittsburgh. He takes me back and there's a, takes me back to see the executive officer and his name is um, um, Bob Piper. And he says, um, so I, I met him and I says, oh, my pet, um, Petty Officer Booth, I'm here to report for um, recruiting support duty. And, and I said, but boy, would I love to have orders. And he says, well, what's your command? And I said, USS William B. Pratt. And in the Navy at that time, we actually, there was 10,000 yeomen in the Navy during the 70s. And then you gotta remember also that part of my anxiety, a lot of people didn't like the military in the 70s. But here I am with the executive officer. He immediately calls, and this is a Monday morning, he calls um, the, the, um, the Navy in Washington, D.C. And the very first phone call, he got a hold of my detailer. And he says, I have a young man there, Petty Officer Booth, third class, um, says that he'd like to come to Pittsburgh. We'd like to have him. And the, recru and the uh, detailer, his name was um, Evans, Mr. Bo um, Ed Evans. And he says to me, he says, oh, that's Petty Officer Booth. He says, yeah, tell him uh, to get back to the ship. I want to go ahead right now, put him into orders for Navy Recruiting District Pittsburgh. And, um, and I walked out and all that anxiety and everything left. But that's the kind of God that we serve. But when you're on a journey, you do not know what's, what's gonna happen. And if you wanna know the rest of the story, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll be here for several years. I'll be glad to share. And getting back to pastor's message. Today, as we meditate on the beginning of the church here and anticipate the coming of Jesus, on Christmas, Luke's gospel points us to the purpose and goal of Jesus' birth and life on earth, to go to Jerusalem and purchase our salvation. And there is the Christmas connection to peace in heaven and glory in the highest. That sounds an awful lot like what the angels sang at Christ's birth. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace peace between heaven and earth because of the coming of the Christ. He came at Christmas as a little child so that one day he could ride into Jerusalem as the righteous king, having salvation. And now he comes here today, right here in this service, righteous and having salvation. We sing with the pilgrims of Jerusalem, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Because now in our Sunday services, our Lord comes to us in his word and sacrament. He comes to us now announcing the peace he won for us by going to Jerusalem. He comes to us now giving us his body 
and blood for our forgiveness. Life and salvation. It's Advent, and here comes Jesus. That's how the gospel reading fits for you today on this first Sunday in Advent. But it's also the first Sunday of the church year, and our text fits perfectly in that regard too, for it sets us off on a journey, a journey to Jerusalem. That's where we're going in the church year, to Jerusalem. That's where it all leads. And after that, that's where it flows out from, the hinge, the focus, the pivot point for the whole church year is Jesus going to Jerusalem as described in our text today. Holy Week and Easter, that is the central focus for the whole year. Advent gets us ready for the coming of the Savior at Christmas, coming in the flesh so he can suffer and die on the cross. Epiphany is the manifestation of God's Son to the world, his public ministry of healing and blessing showing what his salvation mission will produce. During Lent, the journey to Jerusalem intensifies with growing opposition and predictions of his passion. Then comes Holy Week, when Jesus rides into Jerusalem to suffer and die. For there is no other way for mankind to be saved other than the Son of God dying for the sins of the whole world. And at Easter, the risen Christ shows himself to his disciples in Jerusalem, showing the victory over death that his death accomplished. So today we start off on that journey to Jerusalem, to Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Easter morning. That week in Jerusalem is the pivot of that year. For from that point on the rest of the church, year unfolds. Our Lord sends, ascends into heaven to sit at the right hand of God and set the church out in her mission. The salvation Christ won for us in Holy Week forms the foundation then for the long green season of teaching and discipleship and our life as a church. The church here finally concludes with a look ahead at the end times and our Lord's second coming or advent. The hinge of it all is the Holy Week coming of Jesus into Jerusalem. And so our text today does a good job of giving us a focus for the year to come. That is what I love about the Christian year, church year. It keeps us close to Jesus. It puts us on a journey with our Savior that mirrors the salvation he has won for us and will bring into us. But church here keeps central things central and gives us the right perspective to look at life and points to us to the power to live in it. Today, we start out that journey to Jerusalem, Jesus leading the way. That's where it flows from, the hinge, the focus, the pit. Excuse me. That is the place sacrifice where God's appointed sacrifices are made, sacrifices to cover sin. And that's why Jesus must go to Jerusalem to offer up the perfect once and for all sacrifice for all sin, for your sins and mine. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, lost sinners like you and me. You and I have sinned, haven't we? We have not lived the life of love we ought to live serving God our creator in holiness, serving our neighbors in love. For we often stray in pursuit of our own journeys, don't we? Seeking a different destination than the one God has in store for us in Jesus. This, is, this we have done, and that is sin. And your conscience tells us, your conscience tells you that is so. God's word declared that it's so, even if your conscience is grown dim and dull, even old Jerusalem, which was supposed to be the holy city, Jerusalem, was most unholy when it rejected a Messiah and nailed him to a tree. God's judgment fell on Jerusalem as a, as a result. And we would fear no better save for the Lord sparing us and giving us faith in our Savior. How we give thanks to God for the saving 
faith bestowed as a gift through the gospel. How we give thanks for the Savior, the gospel reveals Jesus Christ, the Holy One and the Savior of the world. Yes, Jesus is the King who comes into our midst, freely giving you the salvation he won you for his journey for Jerusalem. And now that sets, and that now sets us on the way to Jerusalem above. You see, there's one more journey to Jerusalem, and that's we're all in. And that's the path that we're talking on, that we're walking on now to the new Jerusalem. For when Jesus comes again, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and with it, a new Jerusalem. That will be the true holy city, the dwelling place of God with his people, completely without sin and with no more death and sorrow. We're on the road to that blessed place, you and I. The path that we're walking on is the way of faith and discipleship, the way of holiness and love, the way of repentance and forgiveness. This is an Advent journey. It's a journey of hope, of looking forward to the future, even as we pay close attention to how we're living here and now. We're on the way to the new Jerusalem, fellow pilgrims, and that puts us, and that puts great joy in our journey. Today is a day of full of firsts, for it's the first ad Sunday in Advent, it's the first Sunday in the new church year, and it's the first day in the year of St. Luke. But first and foremost, today is a new day in the Lord. Whatever our dear detours and, and dead ends in the past, now by, God great, by God's grace, we start out afresh. Today we are starting out on a journey to Jerusalem, and Jesus is leading the way. Amen.